In this lesson, we're going to talk about how we can create geometry from an edge. This way we can create our rope going around this handle, which will duplicate going all the way up the handle. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and zoom in on this sword. And we're going to need to get rid of some edges because we kind of want to keep these edges in a uniform manner. So that way we have some edges here that are way too close together. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these edges. So right click, go ahead and select edge. Then let's select one of these edges on the bottom and you'll see I have symmetry activated. I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate symmetry in my selection tool. That way I can just selecting one edge. And I'm gonna go up to the top here and I'm just gonna double click on this edge at the top. And you'll notice that what I've done here is I selected an edge at the bottom and by double clicking on my destination edge, it'll select every edge in between the edges that I started with and the edge that I ended with. So that's how you do it. You would select one edge. I'd hold down shift here, select this edge in the middle, and then I'd go up to the top and I'd just go ahead and double click there. And you see it selected only the edges going up to this point. It doesn't go all the way around as if I were to just double click on an edge, it would go all the way around the sword. We don't want that. I just want to go ahead and get rid of these ones right here. And I'm going to get rid of this one right here. So I'm going to go down to here and just double click on the bottom just to get these. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and select this one here. Go down to the bottom, select the other one, double click it. And this one here, select it as well as the final one. I'll select it and just go up to the top and double click it. Now I need to get rid of any extra vertices or rather points that I don't want in the scene. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold down control and press delete. That will delete all the edges along with any vertices that were connecting to them. Because if I were to just press delete, it would have left some vertices right in here where those edges used to connect. So you always want to do control and delete when you want to get rid of both the edge and the vertices. So now that those are gone. Let's go ahead and insert an edge loop around right here at the bottom so we have a reference edge that we can create our rope around. So let's come up here. I'm going to select this split selected. I still think that's weird for a tool tip. It's the insert edge loop tool. Then click that and we're going to use a relative distance from edge. I'm going to come down here at the bottom and I'm just going to go ahead and pick a spot and just kind of just try to determine, okay, probably right about there, I think is a good spot for it. And that's where I'll go ahead and drop that edge. Now I'm going to press Q on my keyboard and I'm going to come up here and go to modify and you're going to go down to convert and you're going to see in the convert list, you're going to see one that's polygon edges to curve, all right? We want to create a curve so we have something to work with. So go ahead and select that option. Now, you could also check here. It should all just be the default settings. So if you select your default, nothing in here should be changed and you should be fine. So just go ahead and click convert. Now you notice where our edge was, we have this ring going around our sword handle. We're going to use that to our advantage. This is a NURBS curve. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and name this curve so we don't lose what we're working with here. So come over here and open up your outliner. Again, if you didn't follow this from the previous tutorial, all you have to do is come up here, go to Window, and select Outliner, and that'll pull this window up here. Or you can also right-click in one of your pane views and select Perspective slash Outliner. So that way you get a window here. Now, if by doing that you accidentally, like I did, just accidentally select that curve, you can marquee select and deselect your sword, and that's an easy way to select a curve because it's just a very thin line and it can be hard to select. This is our poly to curve. Let's go ahead and rename this as, I don't know, let's call it target. All right, that way we know that this is our target. This is where we want to target our ring around. We want to create an object going around this curve. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a ring. So let's go up to create. Go ahead, go down to NURBS primitives. And you're going to go down to circle, all right? And just go ahead and select circle. Now you don't see it because it's underneath our sword. If I were to go like this, I can see it here, but I don't really have to worry about that because as you can see, I can select it via the outliner. So let's go ahead and we'll just double click this and we'll write on this. This is our source. So we'll go ahead and just call that source. All right, now with the source, go ahead and select your source, then hold down shift and select your target. The order there is very important. You always want your source selected first and then your target selected second. 
Always remember that. Your source is where your shape is, and your target is where you want your shape to go. All right, now with those two selected, my target being the second selection, it's very important. We're going to go up here, and we're going to go to Polygons. We're going to drop down the menu, and we're going to go to Surfaces. All right, once we get into Surfaces, we're going to drop down the Surfaces menu, and we're going to go over Extrude, and we're going to go ahead and click the Settings option for Extrude. Now, your settings are probably going to be different than mine. To make this very quick, you can see these first four options. Go ahead and just drop them on the end, and I'll explain. The style we want is a tube, because we want it to sort of tube along this. This is the shape as our source. That's what we want to tube along this. And we want the resulting position to be at the path, which is our target. That's the path. I should have probably called this path, but it's you get the idea. And our pivot is the component. And what that means is that our source and this, this here, this ring, if you were to think about this like a circle was going around this point here, like let me zoom in and explain what this is doing. It's saying that the pivot for this tube that we're going to create is going to be dead center of this. So our ring, the dead center pivot of it, is going to be where this line is. And a pivot is, if I press W, this is our pivot. And usually, if you look, the pivot is right in the middle of the ring. Well, I want this ring to create a tube where it's centered along this, so it's kind of half inside of our handle and half out. I'm sure if you play around with this and you create a couple more of this in different locations, that'll start to make sense. Now, if you look at the orientation, that can be set to the profile normal. And don't worry about rotation. Have that at zero and scale is set to one. Now, your curve range can be complete and your output geometry should be NURBS. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click Extrude. Now, as you can see, it's created our nice little ring here going around our handle, but it's a bit too big, so we need to change some of the scaling on this. So all we have to do to do that is we can select our source, which is our original object, and we can press R, and if I scale this, you'll notice it scales the ring. Now, I don't want to select the extruded surface. Right? I don't want to extrude that. What you want to extrude is your source because it's still connected. Now, one of the things you can notice, and this is currently a bug with Maya, where anytime you scale on the negative one, like if I were to try to mirror an object using a negative one scale, or if I create geometry as we're doing now, you see that the normals are backwards. That's why you're seeing a black surface. So we just need to flip that around. To flip a NURB surface around, you'll be in surfaces, then you'll go to edit NURBs. But first you want to select the surface, then go to edit NURBs, and just come down here and do reverse normals, reverse surface direction. And that'll turn it around the right way. This way we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select my source again. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of determine how big I want this rope to be. Now, I kind of want this to be a fairly fine rope, like a very thin one. Maybe not that. So I'm going to be a little bit bigger. And you have to determine your sword, how big you want this to be. Now what we want to do is we want to turn this NURB surface into a polygon object so that way we can work with it some more. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do is we're going to select the extruded surface one. All right, this is the object that we just created around our hilt. And we're going to come up here to modify. I'm going to go down to convert and you're going to go to NURBS to polygons because that's a NURBS surface and we want to convert it to a polygon surface. But before we do that, we need to change a couple settings. Go ahead and click the settings options. Now you'll want to go ahead and set yours up the same as mine. You'll see I have attached multiple outputs. Merge tolerance is a 0.1. That's how close any points will merge together. You can have the type set to quads. That's fine because we want it to output quad surfaces which really at this point, because we're just creating projection, it wouldn't really matter because all we need is that the surface that we're going to project from our high poly to our low poly, you do not have to worry about things like quads and tries. You just have to worry about how the surface of it looks because that's all that's going to matter when we do a projection. Then uh, your tessellation method, you can set that to general. Now here's what you have to understand is the initial tessellation controls, all right? Now what's going to happen when we convert this NURB surface to a polygon? It's going to determine how many faces this object has when it becomes a polygon object. What we have here is U, and now what U is is these lines going in a horizontal direction across our object. The more I increase this, 
the more it's going to have. It'll smooth this out more. We can go ahead and probably leave this at one and we'll see how it looks. If we need to increase it, we'll go ahead and increase it by just hitting Control Z and doing it again. Now in the V type perimeter, that's your vertical. Now as it's set now, because we created this from an edge, it will actually have the same amount of edges and it would be a perfect fit around this handle, but I kind of want it to be smoothed out a bit because again, we're creating a higher poly object here. So I'm gonna smooth this out some, so I'm actually gonna increase this and I'm gonna try 10. So it will, in between this point and this point here, there will be 10 edges added to it when it becomes a polygon object. And that's how that works. You can increase it or lower it. So I'm gonna hit 10. Now you go ahead and leave these to their default settings. They should be the same as mine. And go ahead and click Tessellate. Now if I right click and I go to object mode and I deselect, now one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is hide your extruded surface. So go ahead and select that and hit Control plus H. And that's hit it. Now I can see exactly what the polygon surface looks like. And if I zoom out a bit, I can get a really good idea that that looks very nice. Now one of the problems that we have to do is this object here is still connected to these other objects. So there's two steps that I usually take to make 100% sure that this is no longer connected to the other objects. Because again, if I were to select source and I were to scale that, you can see it's still changing this. I'm hit control Z to put it back where it was. And I don't want that. I don't want it connected to all these because I want to be able to just delete these objects and keep my new polygon object in the scene. So what you have to do is the first thing you come up to do and you're going to go ahead and click modify and select freeze transformations with your, of course, NURBS to poly object selected. And then go to edit delete by type and select history. And now you'll see if I select the source and I scale it up and down, it has no effect on our new object. So now we've just created a ring going around our weapon from an edge. So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how we can duplicate this new object multiple times to make it go clear up the handle through one operation. This way we don't have to continuously duplicate it, move it up a little, then duplicate it again and move it up a little all the way up the handle. We can do one operation that will duplicate it, clear up the handle for us. And we'll take a look at that in the next video. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com.